What's up, guys? This is Mark here, the world's strongest man. You're listening to Bob Culture Podcast. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into a very special WWE Crown Jewel Predictions Panel episode of the BCP Shameless Promo brought to you by, I like that, can you BCP, our friends at Funkenstein Wrestling Superstore located in the English Town Flea Market here in lovely New Jersey, Saturdays and Sundays from 8 to 3 p.m. or visit them online ebay they got their site funkenstein wrestling superstore hey we just put out a commercial for them you should check it out on youtube we got x-men superheroes we got you know all sorts of sports stuff turtles ghostbusters oh yeah did i mention wrestling horror retro video games all that good stuff heather and dan thank you for supporting the show guys please give them a follow on social media check them out online and also we are brought to you by contest of champions getting the sponsors this month december 3rd in tom's river new jersey where heroes gather guys get your tickets now we have a fan fest kimmy i might see you in some form or fashion you work for everybody we'll see what happens with that we have a super camp <laughs> and a wrestling show uh with an appearance by i don't know uh he's called the icon sting matt cardona will be there sergeant slaughter jerry the king lawler uh we got todd frazier we got a lot of big names december 3rd tom's river new jersey get your tickets now and follow standalone wrestling on social media, shameless promo, and now that the bills are paid, please welcome to the show. You know him coming off another perfect performance here on the BCP, the Mr. Perfect of the BCP, the very handsome host of Sweet Chin Musings. You know him from the popbreak.com, the BCP. I'm running out of breath here. Help me out, Mike. How are you, Mike Mueller? Doing great, man. Doing great, Rob. As always, it is an honor for you to have me on your show. So happy to be here. And I have to say, I, I, I'm I, all about honesty and accountability. I wasn't technically perfect last time, but what does matter is I beat Kimmy. So in the scorebook of life, I'm still winning. And as I always like to say, perfection is not a stat. It's a state of mind. And so you really can't argue with my perfection because if you say well what is perfection it is me what am i i am perfection and i'm so happy to be here speaking of which uh rocking the always a heel t-shirt available now on tpublic.com always a heel baby always a heel heels have more fun and let's take it to mike's number one fan giving a lovely thumb oh, was that a thumbs down i'm sorry i thought it was a thumbs up you know her from gosh every free agent promotion out there she works with the main eventers at the convention she is maria canelis's personal protege you know her from the bcp kimmy talks wrestling the popbreak.com the list goes on and on i'm gonna get yelled at for missing so much but i'm running out of breath please welcome back to the show the goodest sister miss kimmy 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 so cool kimmy what up good sister how are you well, Mike, you might be perfect, but I have a resume that speaks for itself. I am doing fantastic. We are here. And Mike, I'm going to have you beat this time because I read our little article, you know, your little preview for Crown Jewel. And there's one match that we disagree mm -hmm. on. And that's the one that I'm going to win and have perfect predictions over you. Wow. Big talk already. And as you guys know, we got to, you know, we have the, the Kimmy versus Mike hashtag fight forever. You know, we got to bring in a debut. We love having debuts here on the BCP. He is rocking his BCP shirt. Please welcome making his debut a social media superstar and wrestling aficionado. Please welcome to the show, Mr. Wayne Keener. Wayne, welcome in, man. It's Wayne's World. What's up, bro? Hey, man, thank you guys for having me. Uh, long time listener, first time uh, Don in the headset, but uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, Crown Jewel is always one of those unpredictable shows because, uh, you know, you got the you got the overseas stuff going on and, and the way that the, the storylines are kind of refreshing. So it should be interesting to see uh, to see what we all come up with. 
Yeah. So thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. Welcome. And uh, guys, again, I believe this is going to be Saturday afternoon, our time. So we'll check it out. A lot of big time matches. You know, we've seen this event in the past. We see the uh, a lot of the pyro, the the fireworks. They make this a very grand stage. So should be a very interesting show. Um, what do you guys want to start with? You want to talk? Start with a big match, maybe a heavy hitter. I don't know, like uh, Brock Lesnar versus. Bobby Lashley, people still excited about this matchup. They've wanted it for a long time. They got it. Now we're getting it again. Um, people seemingly very happy with it still. Um, I'm loving Lashley lately. We can say it like every other podcast, like every other show. Brock Lesnar comes and shows up when Brock Lesnar wants. He does what he wants. But does Brock Lesnar take a dub here? Does he take an L here? Um, does it make more sense for Lashley to win here? Kimmy, I saw you not so excited about this one, but I'm interested where your mind's at for this one. I'm excited just because this should have been the WrestleMania night one main event and no one could convince me otherwise. The fact that they literally did not capitalize on this match for WrestleMania literally breaks my heart. And now we have to have it in Saudi, which to Do me... Do you mean just- for... Last WrestleMania? Yeah, yeah the other okay, one in Dallas, right, the yeah. one that just passed because they wrestled yeah. at the Royal Rumble this right. year. Come on, Mike, get your... Oh, I'm just making started. sure... No, I'm just making sure we're on the same page. Okay, okay, good. Yeah. Um, Obviously, Brock's going to win. This is most likely the last time we are going to see him for the year because he won't be at Survivor Series, and this is the last premium live event before we hit Royal Rumble season. So Brock's obviously going to win because why would he lose in Saudi when he's getting a big, fat-ass paycheck? Okay, very interesting. Mike, Mr. Perfect, so in tune with WWE booking. Maybe this is a little bit different uh, for this particular scenario. What are your thoughts, man? Because more times than not, you're right. You're absolutely right on that. I am right most of the time. And I'm going to be right here. Um, No, Kimmy's right. This is going to be a Brock Lesnar win. The thing with Saudi, though, that's kind of bizarre is it's kind of – Crown Jewel is to the WWE as the Pro Bowl is to the NFL. Is it important? Not really. Is it fun? Kinda. Do most of the people there wish they were somewhere else? Yes, they do. But we're here and it is canon. And I can see a scenario, actually, if this is the only thing Brock Lesnar does for a while, and the next thing that he does is not fight Bobby Lashley again. I can see the rationale behind giving Bobby Lashley a win here, but I do think Brock is going to stick around at least short term enough to where we get a payoff because even though there was a Brock Bobby match technically before Royal Rumble, the Royal Rumble match was really the first one that mattered. And this is the sequel to that. Again, like Kimmy said, it's way too late. They should have capitalized on it when it mattered more. But it's Saudi, you pull out the big guns, so you bring you bring Brock back, assuming that you're going to have him win and this is going to lead to a third rubber match. Is it next year WrestleMania? Is it Royal Rumble? Is it Survivor Series? Who knows? But I have never been shy about the fact that I'm not a fan of Root and Toot and Brock. I don't like Cowboy Lesnar. It's not my thing. But the crowd does really seem to like him, and he is over. And him and Lashley did, I was happy with their Royal Rumble match. And I think I'm going to be happy with this match. So I do hope that Brock gets the win and we get that rubber match down the road. Not everything has to go to three matches, but this one just seems like the back and forth makes all the sense in the world. And it is Saudi. You do kind of have the biggest names get over in Saudi, including the match that nobody here is going to talk about. But the part-time players do tend to shine on this stage and Brock is going to shine here. Wow. Very, very interesting. Um, And again, you know, we always go right to like, who's going to win, man. But I I think you explained it perfectly, Mike. It's like, Hey, this could be a really fun, good match too. You know, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. They had a solid match at Royal Rumble too. So I'm excited to see them get some time in the ring. Should be very interesting. And this is not uh, my preferred style of wrestling either. And I'm still excited for it. Um, Check into the comments real quick before we throw it to rain. Uh, to Wayne, excuse me. <laughs> we'll talk about Roman. We'll talk about the Wayne's the head of the table over there. That's why. Uh, SP Anderson in the chat, GM, uh, saying, I predict pain. That's very solid prediction. Darren Fisher in the chat from This Wolf, the band, saying, Hi, Rob. What's up, bro? Uh, guys, let us know who you got. John, call. Oh, the comments are coming in. John uh, saying, What up, man? 
Bubba John, welcome in. Let us know who you got. We're talking about Brock versus Bobby. And uh, Kimmy, you got some fans here. I'm just here to show my support to everyone except Kimmy. Edmund, how... It's not nice. It's the good Edmund's system. the worst. Wow. No, wait. Edmund's, Edmund's my me- new favorite person. Edmund, I want to send you Welcome, a cookie man, basket. And subscribe on YouTube. No, you can't do that because he gives me, you know, we've gone through a lot. He gives me M&Ms at all of my work conventions, but he just likes to see me, you know, timber down this little ego oh. people think I have. Yeah. Quotation marks. Just, there's no Kimmy. Same there's things. no AEW stars around trying to steal your hat or beat you up or anything. You're good over there, right? Listen, I have a problem with Nyla Rose. Okay, we need to get this get actually it out of stated. Way. Go ahead. Do you really? Is this really who you want to start a fight with? <laughs> yes, it is because she assaulted me first. Okay, like who do you think you are going up to my talent when I wasn't even there? You know, I was talking to my good friend Candice LeRae, and you want to provoke my talent? You're going to a convention that you're not even supposed to be at. She wasn't supposed to be there. She drove from Washington DC all the way to Baltimore to provoke my talent. That's how obsessed you are with the baddies and Jade. Maybe if you actually beat Jade, then I could take you seriously, but you didn't beat Jade. So beat Jade first, then maybe I'll let you do that. But you know, she inspired my Halloween costume because I was the baddie security guard and I can't wait to see the baddies again in North Carolina on November the 26th when I work with them again at WrestleCade. Wow. This, by the way, this all cuts into her self promo time at the end. I hope we're all on. <laughs> okay, board perfect. With that. You know, I'm I'm just booked. Yeah, for I the am rest perfect. Of the year, Mike. Thank you, oh, Kimmy. Gosh. Finally admitted it. It's starting already. Rob, will you throw it to Wayne, please? So he can. I will, but Kimmy, I am proud of all all the uh, name drops. I'm so damn proud of you, uh, Wayne. What do you Thank think you. about this match, Brock versus Lashley? You know, as the new guy, I'm going to uh, you know shake it up a little bit. I actually think, um, you know, I, I think that. Lashley is going to get the win. Um, I just, I don't, I don't see why, um, why Brock needs it. You know, I just feel that you look at the, the animosity with what Brock did cost and cost him the belt. Um, you look at that buildup. I feel like all of this is happening to make a, a Saudi match. You know what I mean? Just to have something on the book. Cause like uh, Mike talked about the pro bowl, you know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't really make sense, you know, but like we needed a big banger, you know, heavy hitting match. I'm sure we'll talk about the other, you know, massive one later, but I, I think Lashley gets it. I don't think it needs to go to a rubber match. I don't think Brock sticks around for long-term storytelling here. I think Lashley gets his revenge in uh, on crown jewel. And that's, uh, that's my pick. So probably wrong but that's my uh, justification behind it so no man this is the bcp man you're wearing that bcp shirt Tim's promo available on tpublic.com but we talk about bob culture podcast we got to go bobby lashley nice segue because i'm gonna go bobby lashley as well i think he's a kimmy shaking her head at me that that means i'm making i right didn't move. like that segue that segue was, was absolutely it was horrible bad. you're not wrong um, but I think I was reaching. Um, I think Bobby Lashley takes this one. I think it makes more sense. You know, you're bringing in. I mean, maybe sense isn't the way to go here, but uh, I think Bobby Lashley takes the win here. He defeats Brock. I don't think there's, like you said, any reason for Brock to win. He's in. I think he's out. Maybe we'll see him come Royal Rumble time, uh, Road to WrestleMania kind of deal. Um, and I, I got you, Mike. And um, I just think. I just think it doesn't make sense. But again, like we said earlier, Brock does what Brock wants. Um, I'm, I'm just I'm liking Bobby Lashley right now. And, and I think this would this would be kind of awesome. And I think it is going to be a solid match. And again, not my type of match uh, per se, but I'm very excited for this one. Guys in the chat, let us know what you got. Mike, tell me why I'm wrong real quick. I saw you politely. No, not you telling you why you're wrong. It's just this. I wanted to bring this up uh, in my original point, and I forgot to. My thing is, if. If Brock wins, I, we can keep going with Bobby and Brock. If Bobby wins, where does Bobby go? Is is he challenging Roman? Like my my issue is I'm having a hard time seeing where a dominant Bobby Lashley goes from here, if not directly to the title pitcher, which I would be all for. I Bobby Lashley was recently on Sam Roberts' podcast, and he made me a, a big fan of Bobby Lashley. Uh, it was such a good interview. But – He's coming off the U.S. title, which he lost to the Browns, and he, say that a little louder. I don't think the people heard you. Can you say it a little louder? They, I'm sorry, I can't. I forgot what I said. But if he doesn't go now to the main event, where is he going? 
I feel like it's all in he's in it. This is a very weird position where I feel like it almost hurts Bobby Lashley more to win because I'm having a hard time seeing any significance in his next feud, unless it's against Roman Reigns, which I would be fine with. I just don't believe that's where they're going. So that's something I wanted to bring up as far as why I made my pick him losing to Brock gives him something to do, get revenge on Brock, him winning kind of buries that. And I don't see he's in this weird, he's, he's between upper mid card and main event. And it, I feel like he's sort of in a, a bit of a no man's land. It's a champagne problem to have. It's, is he really good or is he amazing? Like it's a, it's a good spot to be in, but it just, the direction seems much more clear with him losing than with win- him winning. That's all I got to say. You know where he's not going to go? Back to the U.S. title picture because my man. No, because you're right. Because he's above that. <laughs> no, because Rollins is just so good that he beat Bobby Lashley. Like you'll you never hear that. me say. You'll never hear me say Rollins is bad ever. Rollins is great. He just doesn't need to win. He doesn't need a belt. Um, oh, okay. Guys, please welcome to the chat real quick. Uh, Daniel Parker from Parker Kane Promotions. Um, he's saying Lashley is going to win this one. Very interesting. Um, oh, I take my applause back. <laughs> I'm just reading the comments real quick. Uh, Darren Fisher saying I got ten dollars on Nyla. Going back to what we were talking about earlier, uh, people. John Clark in the $10. chat saying all the way Nyla will destroy Jade. Not what we're talking about here tonight, but we did bring it up, man. So we'll see what happens. And I thought it was nice that Nyla showed up at Baltimore Celeb Fest. She was very polite was. to everybody. We got <laughs> pictures on it now. It was just great. a picture she got with a me. Free in the hat. Lot. Yeah, yeah was, come on, let's go. She was polite to you. She beat me up, and then as she I gave filmed it. Her hat. As I filmed it, yeah. <laughs> no, and then you decided instead of sticking up for one of your key pillars of the Bob Clover project, you decided to film it and then post it. So what type of person are you to not <laughs> even defend me in my in my time of need? When Nyla Rose is within striking distance, you yeah. back Nyla Rose. Look, you got you got your goodest brothers you? there. We, we 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 were not gonna step up. Strong, strongly yeah. written letter. Yeah, so that's right. Very strongly written letter. Uh, let's move on here, guys. We're having too much fun uh, today. Kimmy, where do you want to go ne- next? Since I was mean to you. Or I didn't stick up oh, for you. Thank you so much. Well, um, usually I would go to a Seth Rollins match, but unfortunately he's too good to be on this card. He's above this card. So let's go to the steel cage match between Karrion Cross and Drew McIntyre. Yeah. Um, you want to start out this one? Can you tell us what you think? Of course I do. Because why not? So obviously, you know, this is the match that in the last predictions cost me because I decided to put a little bit too much faith in Drew McIntyre. But you know what? I heard he was a brilliant best man to Sheamus in their wedding this past weekend. So congratulations to Sheamus and Isabella on getting married. Pictures Woo-hoo. came out great. Oh, I know. Do you see Seth's blonde hair? I hope you really enjoy Seth's new blonde it was gorgeous. Hair. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. So anyway, so I think this is the one that Drew does win. And this does lead to a rubber match. Obviously, the steel cage, I would have rather that be the stipulation at Extreme Rules because it kept Scarlet out of the match. And I thought it made a little bit more sense because strap matches freaking suck. But I'm not booking WWE programming. But I'm going to pick Drew. And Drew, for the love of God, please make me win and not lose this time. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, it's it's interesting going with Drew this time. I I went with Cross last time because I'm like I'm like it just makes sense for Cross to win here. But again, like we we run into this predicament. Um, when we have all these rematches. You know, we talked about uh, Bobby and Brock. Now we're talking about this immediate re- rematch here. Uh, it's like it's. <sighs> does like does Cross have to win again? Like I I'm I really can't get a read on this one. I mean. It's you, it, you got the stipulation going on here. I think it's more about the stipulation in this one. You know what? I'm going to go across just to, to win again here and, and just drive Drew. to. I'm trying just to make sense of this all to make Drew angrier, be more dramatic in, in some of his actions that he's going to do. Um, the cage should be very interesting. Maybe Scarlet somehow gets involved or gets some sort of foreign objects uh, through the cage or helps carrying across in some form or fashion. Um I'm I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around this one, but uh, I think carrying it makes sense for carrying cross to win here. Wayne, what do you got? So I would agree with you. Um, I, I thought initially it would make sense for a cross to win, 
Um, but you know, if you look at the the buzz that's going around, Drew McIntyre is one of like the short list to ultimately unseed Roman Reigns of his of his title. And so you got to ask yourself, what would a a loss here do for that momentum? Like, how would you come back from that? Um, so ultimately my choice is going to be for Drew to win the cage match. Um, but I feel like you still need to keep Cross strong and Cross needs to have something to do after this. So what does that look like? You know, maybe the brawling brutes come and they, uh, you know, kidnap Scarlet from, from ringside, you know, that distracts Cross. Cross, what the hell, turns around right into a Claymore. Drew wins. It's a clean win, but it's also a distracted win. Cross stays a beast. He goes on the feud with Sheamus. Drew goes on to the world title picture. Okay. That makes sense. Mike, I see you thinking over there, bro. No, this is why I hate going last. So I just... (laughs) I'm so happy for you. Thank you. I just dropped a new podcast uh, where we talked, we gave our crown dual predictions and we also did the top 10 intercontinental champions of all time so check that out but i discussed and i am exactly on pace with wayne here i don't necessarily see the brawling brutes interfering in this match but i really want carrying cross versus sheamus after this feud is done because they are just going to beat the hell out of each other and that's going to be amazing as far as this match goes so kimmy you have to understand like you made the perfect argument against yourself. Like this is the reason why the steel cage match is not the first match because in the first match, Scarlet gets involved. So now we need a reason to keep her from getting involved again, which is why the steel cage match is your second or your third or your blow off match. It's not your first match. Come on. Um, You're better than that, but. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. The way I see this going is uh, I think Scarlet will try to get involved uh, the degree of her success is going to be varied. I see the mace coming back, whether she tries to spray him again directly, she gets in or she throws the mace in to cross. But this time, da, 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 Drew McIntyre is ready for it. He's prepared because he ain't no dummy. Scarlet either ends up macing Karrion Cross or macing herself, and there's the distraction, and Drew gets the win. The thing is, Karrion Cross got his first important win against the main event player, Drew McIntyre. He is going to ultimately win this feud. And I know I've just said for two matches in a row that you don't need to go to a rubber match. And again, I'm predicting a rubber match, but Drew getting this win in a shenanigan sort of way in a steel cage match. I'd like to see him escape the cage. I don't want to see him get a pin or, or a submission. I think he will probably get a pin, but if I'm booking it, I'm having Drew escape the cage, gets the win. That gives us our excuse for a third match in which Karrion Cross eventually goes over. But this is a loss that Karrion Cross can handle because he's already gotten the win against Drew and he's going to ultimately win the feud against Drew. So this is just a nice stepping stone in that path. And as I said on the previous podcast, Drew is the type of person that can slide up and down. He can handle a loss. He can go down the card. He can stay where he is. He can elevate himself at a moment's notice. This is not going to hurt him. I think Cross winning 2-0 against Drew, yes, it it does say that we are putting a lot of faith and a lot of effort behind him. But as long as he comes on out on top in the feud overall, he can lose this match and he'll be just fine. I agree. Yeah, Mike, you're, you say so many things that make sense, man. It's hard. It's so argue. good, right? Yeah. Um, I, I really want to get to this one. Uh, Kimmy, try not to yell at me, but I want to talk about the Raw Women's Championship now. Bianca Belair, the champion, defending against Bailey in the last woman standing match. This could be really good. It might be the match I'm most excited for on this one. Um, I kept saying, you know, Bianca wins, Bianca wins. I don't see Bailey winning at the last event. Um, Bailey hadn't fought in a lot of matches. Now I'm kind of changing my tune a little bit. I think. This is the one where, because you got that last man standing stipulation. I think we kind of talked about last time. I think, not to say like one should oppose the other, but I think Ronda, we were thinking was going to be like that long standing champion going into Mania. Uh, and as we've talked about several times on the show, we need to see the, um, the, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Like the the bumps in the road for Bianca. She's been on top for so long, deservedly so. We've been so pro Bianca since uh, you know black and gold NXT days. Um, she's amazing, man. I feel like half the time they they hold back her offense because she's so good until she gets the big matches, which we'll probably see uh, on Saturday. Um, but I think this is kind of like, and, and I don't think it has anything to do with the, the tag title, the women's tag team titles changing, but we did also talk about, like I said last time, I don't see them being that faction that gets all the gold. I fear that's like a rarefied air. I don't see damage control. Not to say they're not deserving of it. I just, they're such great solo competitors. I think um, Bailey outsmarts Bianca Belair here. I think uh, somehow keeping her down for 10 seconds I, I think we're going to see something crafty, and, and um, I don't think she's driving out on a tractor or anything, but I think we're going to see something uh, really crafty out of Bailey, and this is going to be a big moment in Bailey's career. I, I'd love Bianca to retain, but I think this is uh, where Bailey outsmarts Bianca. Mike, I'll throw it to you, man, because I know you hate going last. Do you think the title changes? I was hoping you're going to me. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, here's three things I'm really good at. I'm really good at playing poker. I'm really good at uh, Madden football on PlayStation. And I'm really good at being wrong on Bianca Belair predictions. If I pick with her, she loses. If I pick against her, she wins. And that's just kind of the way it is. And I hate that. But I'm going to double down one more time. Notice I didn't say I was good at blackjack. But I'm going to double down one more time on Bailey. You had a stipulation in the last pay-per-view with the ladder. That would be a perfect excuse for her to lose and stay protected. Last man or woman, last woman standing is even better for this situation. It's a great way to get Bianca to lose without taking a real loss. Here's the way I see it going down. Um, I don't know what the finish is, but I know what the ultimate false finish is. Because what is Bianca more than anything else? She's strong. She's a beast. She can lift two women up and slam them. She can take a woman on her back and carry her upstairs. And the tried and true finish to a last man standing match is you get the hero down. And the way you beat him is you just bury him with the announce table, with chairs, with tables, with everything that you can. And there's so much on top of them that that's the reason why they can't get up and that's what they're going to do this time damage control is going to get together and they're going to alexa and oscar will come out and there will be hoopla and eventually we get a three-on-one and they just bury everything they can on bianca belair and that's going to be the end right wrong because bianca belair is the one person that can power out of all that she's going to come up like shredder in teenage mutant ninja turtles 2 arising from the rubble and she's going to come up and we're going to go oh my god this is another amazing bianca belair comeback and she's going to come back with something a belt shot to the head a, a, a ddt on a chair something is going to stop her comeback short and this is finally the chance that Bailey is going to get to win and beat Bianca Belair. I see it eventually going into some other direction for a while and we come back for the uh, for WrestleMania. But for now, I think this is the opportunity to get it off of Bianca Belair while still protecting her character and making her look super duper strong. But if Bailey fails now, don't give me Bailey in the main event for another year. And I think that's stupid. So give her the belt now. Give her some credibility. She's done nothing but lose and look a fool since she came back. And I think that's a giant mistake with her character. Wow. This is her time. uh, So my question is, though, Mike, do you think that WWE is going to do the last man standing buried rubble gimmick literally two times in a row to two of their biggest matches? Because that's how Brock lost to Roman with the tractor. You know? But that's how I understand he that lost. was the finish. No, I understand as a fake, as a false finish. But do you think we're going to get that even as a, a false finish, you know, with the repetitive nature of, of what that would look like? Because I agree. I, I'm 100% on Bailey winning. I think the finish is going to be something hair related. I believe they're going to tie her hair down to something Ooh. where she can't get up. That's fun. Believe, That's yeah, fun. It's going to be hair related. Um, I think you got to well, give it to Bailey, uh, but I just I don't know about. 
I, I love Bianca's strength, and you're absolutely right. I just don't know about WWE hitting the the rewind button on the same gimmick, even if it doesn't work. I just I, I, don't I think, know. but I think that's why it works because it's the red herring. It works because you're saying, "Oh my God, we just did this last month, and we're going to do it again, and we're going to think it's the end." But it's, it's her last hurrah. It's the last thing she comes up from. I also think it's going to happen because I already forgot that happened at the last man standing match. So I <laughs> clearly supposed to have wasn't a good that memory. Memorable. I think, I think wow. well, honestly, before you guys start fighting, I think that we, we're kind of working to get, because we all picked Bailey. Correct me if I'm wrong so far. Kimmy, I, I didn't forget you. Yeah. Um, but I, right, I think we're working together. Me. T- Tyler in the chat saying Mike nailed that Bailey take. Yeah, he's good at this stuff, man. He's, he knows what he's talking about. But Wayne, so very good. great contribution saying the hair would be her kryptonite in this that, match. The source of her powers, right? The hair. Yeah, forget forget my like hitting her with the title or something. I love the idea of tying her down with the hair. That is so brilliant. I, I, I forget I, that. I'm picking backing off of Wayne. I, I'm sticking with my false finish, but I'm changing to Wayne's actual finish. I, I think I think that's it. I think it's brilliant. Uh, we've covered all the possibilities, Kimmy. I'm so sorry. Are you going a different direction? Are you? Adding I am going this? a different. Oh, direction. great, great, perfect. Don't don't worry. I'm going different because originally, so I'll tell you a funny story. So Mike and I had like literally we agreed on every match, and I was like, "This is how awful. scary is that?" Yeah. So I texted Phil, and I was like. Um, we have a small issue here. He's like, it's okay. And I'm like, no, it's not. We're ruining the gimmick. You don't get it. So <laughs> then the end of Raw happened. And I was like, wait, I found it. I am disagreeing because I don't understand who thought. So first of all, I don't understand how you're going to have a tag team title match on Monday. You're going to have the same match on Saturday. But if you were going to change the titles, why you wouldn't wait till Saturday? Because like, what the hell? Like, what was the point? I'm not writing WWE's programming, but whatever. I'm going to tell you exactly why Bianca's going to win. Because damage control, right? You know, they're all, all of them with the gold would make too much sense, right? Like, like you said, Rob, you don't, you don't want them to have all the gold, which is why eventually Alexa Bliss is going to turn on Asuka. And Alexa Bliss will eventually be the one to beat Bianca Belair in the twist of twist. Because... She's still kind of creepy. She's not, you know, she's not out of this whole creepy Alexa Bliss, Lily type character. So you never really know. You can't really trust her. So this is why Bianca will win. Because if you didn't put her, if you didn't put the title on Bailey at Extreme Rules when it made the most sense, why are you going to do it now? I, I, I think that's, it's an interesting take. Um, and I'm glad, I'm glad you're pushing back a little bit. It makes it more fun, uh, Kimmy. I'll say this. Oh, you're and, and I think we should throw it to the, the women's tag match for sure. At this point, um, I'm just going to keep it short and sweet on this one. I don't see the titles changing again, and then I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, as far as what you said, Kimmy, um, Alexa, like, turning on Oscar, like, yeah, I guess they did win the gold, and, and that'd be a big twist. But it's kind of like th- everyone's – I almost feel like everyone's kind of being paired together here, maybe because it's like the War Game Survivor Series is coming up. Um, well, I'm not I, saying it's going to happen right away. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, we're no, going to no, go no. through War Games. Sure. And then eventually, like, Royal Rumble. Okay, okay. Because the, because the main problem is right now is, like, the Royal Women's Division is stacked with so many people. And now that Sasha and Naomi are most likely coming back at Survivor Series, the SmackDown Women's Division is very much lacking which is why there's no one on the blue brand to face Ronda, which is a very good reason why she's not competing this weekend. And they didn't I mean, even did you try. Not see em- did you not see Emma return? Like, come on. I, you know? I did. I, I knew that was going to happen before, but that's not, like, exciting to me. Like, okay, cool. You didn't do anything in Impact anyway, so why do you think this is such a, oh, my God, moment? No, wow, your boyfriend you know works for the Kimmy's company? not working with. I've worked with her before, actually. I've worked with her twice. Don't you worry, Mike. <laughs> got that covered anyway so here's the thing they need help with the women's division because if you're not going to put it on bailey who's it going to be you're going to put it on candace you're going to pull the trigger that quickly if it's not alexa if it's not candace who and the same thing with blue charlotte's coming back eventually you're going to have that rematch you're not going to put it on charlotte you're going to make ronda win who are you putting the title on you have no big star over there okay they need help and they don't know what they're doing with the women's division, clearly, because they booked this match twice in the same freaking week for no reason, which is why the titles will not be changing hands. And if they do change hands this Saturday, 
I'm going to be so pissed off. Like, I'm literally going to be at work. I'm going to be like, why? Why, Triple H? What are you doing here, bro? Wow, I was going to ask what your pick was, Kimmy. Very, very well said. I, I love uh, your passion, uh, especially for, for the women's division. A lot of really great talent, and I hope to see them uh, used all to the utmost. Some stellar talent. Bianca, I mean, Candice we talked about. EO, uh, I, I would love to see EO com compete in singles. Uh, Dakota as well. Uh, we'll see. Wayne, what do you think about the women's tag team championships here? Um, this is going to just be be kind of quick, because I do believe it's a, it's a really quick return match from Raw. Um, you know, I don't know whether they needed another match. I don't really see the necessity for it. Um, thinking uh, if, you know, everything falls into place and Bailey wins wins the, the women's belt, um, I don't think you, you drop the belts that quick. Um, you know, I just, I don't. I think they hold on to them. Once again, if Bailey does win the women's belt and then damage control took the tag titles, then you would have that, that faction of all the gold. Um you know, and I don't, I don't think we need that. So I think they stay, they stay where they are. I think Alexa and uh, Alexa Bliss and Oscar keep the belts. Mike, you have to go last sometimes, brother. That's okay. This is the great time to go last. Uh, nothing to talk about. They're, they're retaining. I agree. If you're going to do a title switch, it would have made more sense to do it at Crown Jewel and give Alexa and Oscar that moment. It seemed weird to do it on Raw. I think they're going to retain. Nothing really much to say about that. Let's not waste time. Yeah, let, let's keep it moving. And no disrespect to any of the competitors. I just think we just no. Saw it's this not. Match. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not one team is better than other. It's just booking. It doesn't make right. sense. And they're to all play great potato with it. competitors. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No. no. There's no sense to play hot potato with it right now. All right. Can we go to the? Uh, can we go to the Judgment Day match? Because I got an interesting question for everybody, and I want to see where everybody's. Uh, I'll, I'll let you take the lead on this uh, one. And we have the uh, obviously the OC seeing the Good Brothers back. <laughs> Am I allowed to call him that still? The Good Brothers back in WWE versus The Judgment Day. Uh, Wayne, I'll throw it to you. What do you think of these groups, and who's walking out with the dub? Sure. So I believe that the OC is going to walk out with the W. That's that's my thing. But here's the kicker. Look at the problem Rhea Ripley has been, right? She has been the, the, you know, the low blow queen. She has been the person, the wild card is what they've called her. So... I think the, the story inside the story of this match isn't so much the actual match itself. Who is the big surprise that OC debuts to deal with Rhea? I mean, you know, M Mia Yim, her contract's over in Impact. Like, you could see her pop up as the neutralizer with the OC against Rhea Ripley. But if you think about what women exist on the main roster now, we're not talking NXT call-ups. Like, who would fit into that original club character? You know, a lot of people were throwing Charlotte's name around. I don't see her as that role. She's the, you know, the queen. Like, she's the you know, queen. But the queen. There's no way she's playing that second fiddle. No offense to Rhea Ripley, but that's what she's, you know what I mean? That step back right now. So I have two names, and I'm just curious to see where you guys fall with this. I'm thinking Shotzi would be perfect in that role just because of her, her character, her influence, her bubbliness. But we just did the repackage of Nikki Cross. Why don't we repackage Dewdrop back to Piper Nevin? And why don't we bring Dewdrop into the, to the original club to combat uh, Rhea Ripley so that we have the four-on-four -four kind of moment? I really like the Piper Niven pick. Uh, we don't usually say do drop here on the show that much. We loved Piper yeah. Niven. Uh, not to say we still don't. Do we like the name no. Piper Niven a lot more than we like do drop? But uh, I, I'm very high on Piper Niven for some time. I think that would be a very interesting pick. I'm actually okay with that one. Love Shotzi. I'm not sure about the fit there. But again, if they're like super face, that could be, like you said, fun. That's very interesting. Um, before we, we take it around the panel, uh, who do you have winning this one, Wayne? Oh, I have the OC winning because of whatever that revelation is. I think that puts them over the top. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll copy and paste. Cheers, everyone. Mike, what do you got? Um, I'm copy and pasting. I'm seeing this match ending with AJ Styles getting the pin over Dominic Mysterio. Uh, to get revenge on his one-on-one -on -one match. If we were going to sow seeds of doubt within the Judgment Day, which is 
too soon because this is clearly someone or a faction that they plan on making a main event faction. But if we were going to sow some seeds of doubt, I would love to see AJ Styles get the pin over Damian Priest and then have a thing where uh, Dominic Mysterio spurred on by Rhea Ripley is like, hey, man, I beat AJ and you can beat AJ and there, there's your internal friction. I think it's too early for that. The, the thing that makes the most sense to me is AJ getting the pin over Dominic. He gets his win back while still protecting the overall feud because eventually this ends with AJ versus Finn in a complete barn burner. I'm going to be super honest with you. I don't think we need to bring anybody in to neutralize Rhea. I kind of like the fact that Rhea is not neutralized. I like the fact that Rhea is treated as an equal amongst the men because she is an equal amongst the men. Give me freaking Carl Anderson versus Rhea Ripley. My money's on Rhea Ripley. Like, in a long she shot, give Luke me Gallo Rhea Ripley versus Dominic. They should, she slams everybody. That's what I'm saying. Like, Rhea Ripley is not someone that, like, we need a woman to deal with the woman. No, 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 no. Rhea Ripley's poppy, baby. And okay. she is poppy 100%. I kind of like that in a weird way. Yeah, this is Finn's group, but Rhea Ripley is the emerging star of this group. Holding the it's, it, yep. right yeah, right. completely. She's already completely controlling Dominic. She's not able to be controlled herself, which I love seeing a woman presented in that faction within a men's stable. It's, oh, it's, you know, it was the four horsemen and Miss Elizabeth and woman. It was, you know, okay. I mean, there was always... It was RTC and it was Ivory supporting Val Venus right. and CV Richards. Right, well, no, no, well no, no, let me no, no, let no, me no. ask you this, Mike. Do you agree yeah. then? If we don't need the neutralization, then are we at least going to see the old uh, Road Dog China like cup gimmick? You know what I mean? She hits the low blow, cup in the trunks, Luke Gallows, something like that. Is that I more? Can, more I can totally see that. I want her to be present because I it's same thing. China Intercontinental Champion just missed my list for top intercontinental champions but you know no shameless plugs here uh Rhea Ripley is absolutely on that China level as far as you can throw her into I don't know if WWE wants to start getting back into intergender matches intergender. but if they did if they did even over people like Nia Jax and Beth Phoenix and Karma and other super strong women that they've been presented before there is never in my opinion been a female presented as dominant on an even playing field as Rhea Ripley, because Charlotte's my queen. Charlotte, you know, I stand for her, but Rhea is on a different kind of level as far as if anything, the OC needs to bring in another dude to take care of Rhea. Cause I can't think of any way. I'm sorry, Piper Niven, do drop whatever you want to go by. I'm, I'm betting on Rhea a hundred percent of the time. Shotzi, I'm betting on Rhea 100% of the time. Nikki Cross, back to Psycho Nikki, I'm still betting on Rhea. There is nobody on a mid-card level, to me, that touches the dominance of Rhea Ripley. Wow. Well put. Well put. No, I agree. Mike's so in touch with this stuff, man. Yeah, and and Rhea is absolutely killing it you know we talk to a lot of the indie talent on the show big uh you know pillar here uh, the bcp and you know i always ask everyone like hey how do you feel about like the intergender thing and and to them you know a lot of the answers we get because i'm not a wrestler um you know obviously close to a lot of wrestlers is like hey you know we we trained with the guys we trained with the girls like it's another day at the office for us you know what i mean yeah. um and i just love what Rhea's is doing right now and i i like where your head's at mike i'm, I'm not gonna lie uh let I don't want someone to come outshine Rhea in any form or fashion. I kind of want to see Rhea uh, keep. I, I don't want to know what's next. You know, I'm, I'm very excited for this. So uh, I think you said it perfectly. She's she's outshining the group right now. Kimmy, she is. I saw you shaking your head. I don't know if it's just because Mike was talking and then you're obligated contractually to disagree with him at all times here at the BCP. Uh, what are your thoughts at this one? I feel like no one's really thinking. Truthfully, <laughs> that's fair. We're all old and tired, so. Like, like, let's think of this realistically. Which female would want revenge on the Judgment Day? Hmm. Well, it seems to be. Oh my God, Mike, you're so smart. I, you notice I already mentioned Beth Phoenix, and I said she was inferior. Yeah, but 
you see what they could do if I was WWE. Hmm. What happened last Royal Rumble? Oh, yeah. Edge and Beth Phoenix teamed up in a mixed tag team match against Miz and Maurice. So what if we start to build that match and Beth comes out and it could be Beth and Edge versus Dominic and Rhea. What does that have to do with this match? Because Beth is going to come out in oh, Saudi. Oh, in so- Beth's coming out in Saudi. Yeah. All right. We're not thinking because Beth's coming out in Saudi. Let's play that back on Saturday evening. Hey, if, if okay. Beth comes out in Saudi, though, we'll see. I'll bet okay. 50 bucks right now Beth doesn't come out at Saudi. Okay, so do you want to pay the 50 bucks you owe me from the last podcast when you said oh, that the Good Brothers weren't going to come back we'll, and they we'll did? Or up. that... Or I that Sarah Logan was, gonna, that. was not going to come back to WWE either. And you know what? She did. So it looks like I've been right on return. So we, I wouldn't be doubting me if I were you. Anyway, so obviously the OC is going to win because I don't think Anderson would try to do this whole thing with New Japan and his um, never open championship if he wasn't getting paid a huge ass paycheck. Obviously, the OC is going to win. Wow. There it is. Uh, Mike, I'll be expecting my $50 on, um, uh, in PayPal. Always a huge percent chance. Zero uh, percent chance Beth Phoenix shows up at Crown Jewel. Well, Zero. Okay. Kimmy saying Carl Anderson going to the pay window. We shall certainly see what happens on Saturday. Johnny Burke, welcome in the chat. So good to see you. Let us know who you got because we're going to talk about. Oh, let's go. Almost versus Braun Strowman. Another heavy hitter right here. Are we just going for the spectacle? Or are we going for? You know, because you got to think about Braun. Didn't he win the greatest Royal Rumble and then have that green belt? He did. Does Braun win here? Does a loss here take away from that particular win or his comeback? Uh, does almost desperately need a win here? I'm not sure which way to go. Uh, I feel like Braun might be the obvious answer because of the return and the experience and the accolades. Uh, they've, they've, you know, dropped the ball on Braun a few times in the past. Uh, let's throw it to Mike because he doesn't like to go last. I sure don't. Of course. Let um, him go. And then let Kimmy go last all the time. I see. I see. I, go Bro, I see where you're at. We'll, let, yeah, we'll, let, Kimmy, we'll let Kimmy go after Mike. We don't, we don't want any animosity. Of, you know. Oh, of course not. That's, you know, that's why people watch the show. Sure. She also kicked off the show, but that's okay. Uh, Braun versus almost. I don't think anyone is super excited for this match. Uh, myself included. It's Two big guys going against each other. It's fine. I understand why Kimmy's not excited for this match. Kimmy is, I believe, three feet, nine inches tall. And these are two very, very large men. And Kimmy uh, is very tiny. And she's afraid of them. And it makes total sense. No, it's actually being afraid of giants is an actual condition. I don't know if you know that. And Kimmy has it. It's called fee phobia and she has it, and this match scares her to death, and I get it, but Kimmy, don't worry. It's going to be a short match. Neither of these guys can go for very long and be productive. Braun Strowman's going to get the win because why on earth do you bring him back, just have him lose some, like, almost? MVP is wasting his time and his talent with almost. Uh, Almost is a very nice guy, but this is no... There's no reason for him to win. Braun Strowman, I assumed, was being brought back to face Roman. That didn't happen. If we have him lose now to almost, it's like, why do we bring him back at all? I can't see them throwing in the towel that fast. Uh, Braun Strowman wins. Going with Braun, Kimmy, with the the slow clap. She's not not playing along, Mike. She ain't playing your games. What do you got, Kimmy? So you're lucky I have to be quiet right now or else my through root. My three roommates in the living room will kill me. However, you say that I'm three feet nine, buddy, I'm five foot and a half. So let's get that perfectly clear. You don't even have your facts straight. Second of all, you have to understand the last talent, one of the last talents I worked with was seven foot tall. His name was Kevin Nash. Was I scared of him? No. I work with big stars. So how can I be a kid? I will post receipts of the chat of you being terrified of Kevin Nash. For the record, so let's I, not go I was there. scared of Kevin Nash. So because- As you should be. Fee-fi-phobia. But then, right? If I was scared of Kevin Nash, I wasn't scared of Nyla Rose. I was the one who was protecting my talent again, and the Nyla Rose provoked me. What's your pick on this match, Kimmy? I pick Braun Strowman. Why don't you stop? Like, You see, you have to always keep like attacking me for no reason. Why? 
What does my height have to do with this match? What do my personal because genetics have to do with this match? Because you're small and you're afraid of giants. So, I'm not. Boy. You're spreading false information. There's a clinical diagnosis and you have it. It's a okay. clinical diagnosis? Is there a clinical diagnosis for how stupid you sound right now? Oh, boy. Is that, Kimmy, why? <laughs> I'll have to diffuse this. We're going to put you guys on different brands. Um, uh, Kimmy, what, uh, why do you think Braun? I'm sorry. Um, I think Braun's going to win because the thing that Mike has not stated is that the social media presence for Braun Strowman has been astronomical numbers. The videos on YouTube, he's gotten over, I believe it's 2 million views on every single clip that they show of Braun Strowman. So they would want to capitalize on the social media numbers because the demographic for sports, Mike, is 18 to 34 age range. And that age range is the people who use social media, which means they're going to capitalize on the social media numbers. So to make Logan sure Paul wins. is going to beat Roman Reigns then? No, he's not. That has nothing But to that's social numbers. media. It's a different argument. You know what? That's, that's my Jake Paul. Oh, it's, like, it's okay. I don't like you. I, I'm sorry that I point out very obvious flaws I'll, in your logic. I'll, I'll, I'll reel it in here. Kimmy, I do like that you were thinking with numbers. I do like, I, I like. Thank I like you so much. Mindset. At least someone appreciates my research, unlike some people. But, well, just I'm calling it down. Trying my best here. Give control. Inmates are running the <laughs> asylum at this point. But uh, I'm used to that. But- He's on his phone. He's not even paying attention. <laughs> so- That's rude. I'm, I'm looking up followers for Roman Reigns and for Logan. Oh, boy. Oh. Um, but I like that you're thinking in terms of numbers. Like, hey, this for this particular match, this would be the best uh, business decision. Because I'm having a hard time picking. Wayne, help me out here. Um, I- I'm not going to help you out because I have nobody winning this match, including the fans. Um, I have... <laughs> I, I have this match being a, a, a double DQ, being a thrown out match. I have MVP getting involved. I have two massive monsters beating the hell out of each other to a double count out. Um, I don't think anything gets solved here. I think you have Braun do his train through a barricade. Nobody can answer to 10 count. I just, I don't see anybody walking out with the win here because I don't see almost taking a loss. It, it just, it totally nullifies him. As big as he is, as strong as he is, he's taken too many losses in times that it matters. Braun taking a loss would be absolutely ridiculous. You bring him back to all this fanfare. You let him throw around some mid-carters. Now he's got that challenge, that excitement. I don't think either man could lose this. Um, I've been thinking double DQ from the beginning, MVP involvement. Um, nobody answers the bell. They just fight off in the hell you know they fight right back to the airport like i have no idea i i hate to like just be like you're right and that's what i'm going with that answer man but it makes so much sense it makes so much sense man that is the unique pick that makes so much sense it, it continues it um there's gonna have some big announce table spot you know something legal you get that 10 cat on the outside I'm going to I'm going to steal your answer Wayne. I'm going to give you all the credit for it, man, cuz I think you're right, man. I'm going to go and and Wayne put it perfectly. I I think this is the Yeah, I'm I'm going to go with the draw, the double count out. This is going to continue on um because I don't see an L really propelling anyone or any sort of storyline here. I, I think you said it perfectly. It's a good point. It's a good yeah. point. It's very good. Now, point. speaking of giving somebody credit, Mike, your fee phobia thing, I run a uh, dad joke TikTok page and absolutely dying. So very steal, it. Yeah. steal it. Steal yeah, it. Me, 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 me and Ralph may have to, uh, may have to work that in sometimes. So that's cool. I think Ralph could deliver that line. Oh, absolutely. Ralph. Yeah. Cause he delivers it in my voice. Cause my whole gimmick is bad ventriloquism. And perfect, yeah. Love yeah. it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's talk, yo, Oos, let's talk about the undisputed tag team Oos. championship, the Brawling Brutes versus the champions, the Usos being very Oosy real quick. Segment was brilliant, man. Segment was brilliant. I love it because we weren't expecting it. Like, we've seen them, you know, trying not to break in the past. We've seen, you know, Sammy kind of making them laugh here and there or turn their heads. But this, like, you could almost feel it during the whole segment. And it was a serious segment, too, with a little bit of that, you know, Sammy comedy. And just seeing them break before they even got to the Uzi part, like, almost like they anticipated it 
or you know, like maybe they they broke in rehearsal. I don't know, but it was such a Saturday Night Live like, especially when the crowd noise, like when they just kind of stopped and the crowd noise just went up and everyone's clapping. I'm like, this was kind of a cool moment, you know. Maybe some of the older guys would be like, no, 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 you killed the moment, you killed the story. Da, da, da. I don't know. I didn't feel that way, man. I like that fourth wall stuff a lot, man. I thought it was different, man. I thought it was different. Like you always say, Mike, sometimes you need silly, man. And I thought that was just a silly's great good, great good, moment. silly fun. I don't see the Usos. So, silly sells. Yeah, it, you know? yeah, it was silly great. Sells. It was great. Uh, and hopefully they don't now try to do that. Like let it all be organic. You organic. Know, let it just play the way it plays. If if someone breaks, like let them do it. Don't don't force this or anything like that. So we'll see. Sammy's brilliant. How many times have we said it since his Mania match with Knoxville and all those? Guys? Like he's just he makes everything work. That being said, um, there's no way the Usos lose here. There's no way. Um, we just talked to uh, Offer Junior. Um, Shameless promo, the last match musical. I want to shout that out. Um, that's going to be November fourteenth in Jersey City. Two shows again. We're talking a uh, wrestling musical. Yes, that's right, a wrestling musical. Saw the last two shows. Phenomenal. I'll be there again on the fourteenth. Uh, Offer Junior will be there. Got to shout out the vicious one. She did a great job in that. Matt Cardona will be there. Uh, playing Alexander Swagger. He knocked it out of the park. Uh, Kimmy, if you and Pops can get get out there, you're in Jersey. Wayne, you're in Jersey. It's, it's a great night out. Uh, highly recommend it. That being said, shameless promo. We talked to Alpha Jr., and I asked him, I'm like, hey, man, a lot going on with this bloodline. Are we going to see, you know, maybe all y'all show up at Maine or something like that? You know, he just worked with WWE um, for A&E. Um, you know, he's had some... What Rikishi and I think Foley came to a school for a documentary. They're doing a Samoan Dynasty documentary. There's a lot of going on here. I just I'm excited. We got the Rock rumors coming in. I'm excited to see more of this Bloodline stuff. Why is Sammy there and why is it so good? I don't know. But the Usos ain't le- leaving here, right, Wayne? No, absolutely not. The Usos. Um, you know, it's like one of those things where everybody wants to to believe like this is the time but it's going to just continue like i don't know who is finally going to take the straps off of them um i don't know if they're going to surpass the new day i don't know if the new day is going to get get it before they do like i'm not sure what that looks like but i'm i'm pretty sure that the usos leave uh leave Saudi with a full a full duffel bag of titles and uh still feeling very oozy about their uh their championship reign. Absolutely. We the, we the ones. Kimmy, what do you got? I think one thing Papa H desperately needs to fix is the tag team division because there is no tag team whatsoever on the roster right now that could beat them. I think either he needs to, I don't even know, call up some people from NXT, form some tag teams. I don't know how to fix it, but obviously the Usos are going to win. Obviously the Usos are going to win. Mike, dude, there's no way you're going a different direction here. No, I've got the Usos winning too. Uh, on my podcast, Luke actually made a great argument for why the Brawling Brutes can win this match by DQ or countout and therefore not get the title and start to sow the seeds of dissension within the bloodline. Uh, I won't steal his thunder. Y'all can listen to it about that. Uh, we both agree that Usos are leaving Saudi as champs. He's actually picking against them. He's, he thinks they're going to lose by DQ or something. I think they're going to win clean. I just, they're, I'm, I agree with Kimmy. There's nobody on their level in the tag team division right now. Part of that is straight up talent. The other part of it's booking. Both need to be changed. But uh, the Usos are in a class of their own right now and they're not dropping the belts in Saudi. Yeah. Usos retain. Um, and I believe, Kimmy, if I'm correct, this is main event time, right? Correct. Thank you. John Perry in the chat saying your new champion will be. Logan Paul. I don't know, bro. I don't know if any of us are going Logan Paul whatsoever. I don't know. Yeah, he's got great social media numbers like we were talking about earlier, but I don't know if he's necessarily connecting, I guess is the word. Or like we always say, it's not even like a um, we want to root for you or like Bill always says, damn you. Like what? And why, like a couple matches, and why, like the main, like we know why, but like why the main event, like even Roman said it. It's just like, oh, John Perry said Logan Paul has his brother in his corner. I don't know about that. That would be interesting. It does. It was reported. Oh, it is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Oh, PW Insider yesterday. Well, I, Paul, well, thank you, John, for letting me know. I was not, I'm not aware of that. 
Um, so very, very interesting. Certainly changes things. We talk about, you know, all that that one punch that it also takes is one thing. I, I wasn't really buying into that. Like I get it with like the, the pins and stuff in the hands and they're really selling it. It's different. It's different. It's very wrestling. It's very wrestling, but I'm not believing it. Uh you know, even if you prove me wrong, it's like what is this accomplishing? Uh yeah. Roman I don't even need to say anything else. Roman Roman Reigns, uh, you know, he's your tribal chief. Chief. He's that he's the head of the table. Uh just like Kimmy over at the So Cool So Cool Residence. Kimmy, what do you got? We don't eat dinner together. We don't eat at a table. <laughs> so I eat dinner by myself. Aww. So um, so you're the head of it. Just by the default. Head. The head of your I mean, table. That's right. By the default. Of, our table's but that's round. Kinda, so. yeah. But that's kind of depressing. Anyway, um, I feel like the reason they did this match was because they tried to do a huge main event in Saudi. And obviously, I think there were other contenders that they wanted Roman to face, but maybe things just didn't work out. Like, I feel like if things worked the way they were supposed to, maybe this was supposed to be Cody's spot, but obviously Cody's hurt. Or maybe this was Cody and Randy. If Cody was going to win the title at SummerSlam, however it was going to work out, I have no idea, nor do I care. Um, I understand, like, from, like I said, social media numbers, and Mike, I don't need to, for you to give me the facts. I honestly don't care. So oh, stop I smirking and looking at your phone. I don't care. But I think Logan Paul is a huge international star. Obviously, all the stuff that the Paul brothers do on TikTok, their podcast, they do appeal to a younger audience. So, oh, my God, that's a name. I want to tune in. Obviously, now that Jake is in Logan's corner after his huge fight last week, that's more of a reason to tune in. But there's no way Roman is winning. I, I've been impressed with what Logan has done. I feel like he is more dedicated. I know that he had especially requested to train with Shawn Michaels, and Michaels did that for him. And Sean just doesn't get in there with anybody. So the fact that he did it for Logan is kind of a big deal. So I think Logan is really dedicated. I thought his match at SummerSlam was better than I expected. And I say the same thing what he did at Mania. I think that he's really channeling in. And, you know, he did make the decision to sign for more dates. No one pressured him to do that. That was his own decision. But obviously Roman's going to win. There's no way he's losing that title before WrestleMania 39 in LA. Very well said, as always. Good as sister. Uh, Mike, do you want to take us home, or do you want to go next? I think you should go last. I'll go last. All right. Good. Wayne. Yeah, I mean, there's really nothing more you can say that hasn't been said about this match. I mean, you know, I see the Logan Paul, like everyone said, you know, you understand you get a big a big name in there. It, it peaks interest even within, you know, people who are not your casual wrestling fan. You hear about, you know, this is happening overseas. You know, it's happening in Saudi. You got the Paul brothers involved. I want to tune in. Maybe you got Peacock free with Comcast, whatever. You're going to watch it. But at the end of the day, whether it's one punch or, or whatever, it's, just, it's not happening. Like, I don't know how. I don't know whether it's going to be clean, whether it's going to be Sammy or Heyman or whatever. But Reigns walks out with the belt and not just the belt, but a clean win or a win a definitive win over Logan Paul. Like, I don't see it any other way. Just, I'm with Kimmy. It's not happening before WrestleMania. Like, it's just, you can't, you know? It's it's the safe bet. Uh, That used to be my dating profile. Mike, what do you think about this when you go in a different direction? Uh, Not going in a different direction. It is going to be Roman Reigns. I do want to say, this whole, like, one punch, I can knock you out in one punch, and that's all it takes. Very copy-paste from John Cena. Uh, at SummerSlam, all it takes is three seconds. I don't got to be better than you overall. I just got to be better than three seconds. And the whole time he was doing that, I was going, that is the weakest argument I've ever heard John Cena make. And it's it's the same thing with Logan Paul. Like, I get why we're doing it. It's a puncher's chance. It's uh, Tyson versus Buster Douglas. Maybe one punch and all he's got to do is be down for three seconds, blah, blah, blah. But look, there is no way that Logan Paul and Jake Paul are going to be better then Roman Reigns, Jay Uso, Jimmy Uso, Solo Sokoa, Sami Zayn, if he makes the trip, he's got issues with Saudi. Uh, so I don't know if he'll be there or not. But regardless, there's just no way this happens. But to tie it all back in full circle, what I said in the beginning, where this is kind of the Pro Bowl, and that's the reason why I have no problem with Logan Paul in this spot. As Kimmy said, he over-delivered in the two spots that he had before. So he's shown that he can put on a good match. 
Roman Reigns was not going to lose this match no matter what the circumstances were. You were not going to have Roman Reigns be a two-year champion and then drop it at Crown Jewel at 4.30 on a Saturday afternoon. It's just not happening. It could be a 30-man rumble with his title on the line. I wonder if they've ever thought to do that. But if that happened, he would win this thing. So given the fact that Roman Reigns is going to beat anybody that he's against, Why not give it to Logan Paul? Why not give it to someone who has 30 million uh, followers between Instagram and Twitter, which, by the way, Kimmy is three times more than Roman Reigns has. But given all of that, there's no reason not. It's it's fun. It's fun. It's a ooh, what if some crazy thing could happen? If ever there was a time you were going to give Logan Paul a title match, this is the time. Let it be good. It'll exceed our expectations. Roman Reigns absolutely wins clean. I I would be shocked if he required cheap interference like the way he was winning at the beginning of his title reign against people like Kevin Owens and Jey Uso and stuff. That's not going to happen. Roman Reigns is going to win clean, but it's going to be a better match than most people expect. Yeah, yeah. I I think you're right about the match being really, really good. Um, uh, you know, of course I'm right. Lo- Lo- <laughs> as usual, Mr. Perfect here. Logan Paul, a heck of an athlete for sure. Roman Reigns, top of his game right now. Should be a interesting match. Should be a very interesting um, event on Saturday, guys. Uh, let's get out of here, guys. Thank you for making the time. Uh, shameless promo again. I want to shout out Contest of Champions. I'll put up the official graphic instead of holding up uh, this flyer here. Got plenty of flyers for you guys. There we go. Boom. There's the graphic contest of champions where heroes gather Saturday, December 3rd. Standalone wrestling. We have the fan fest. We have the camp for up and coming wrestlers. There's even a camp for commentators. And then we have the show. Sting will be there. We got Cardona will be there. Brian Myers. It's going to be a great day. December Third shameless promo. And again, shout out Funkenstein Wrestling Superstore. We appreciate you guys so much for sponsoring the show. Let's throw it to Kimmy because she has a long list of accolades. I think she's like an unofficial baddie now. Um, she, I don't I don't even know like who's coming after her at the at the next convention because we certainly can't protect her. Um, so I'm I'm only gonna say one thing because I don't want to go through the whole list. So I'm only gonna say one thing. It's actually an announcement that kind of just got me an official mike knows what it is already because i told him two hours ago so december 2nd oh my god there will be a rider wrestling match at the cure arena against penn state and somebody i don't know who might be directing that little thing is it you kimmy I think it is yeah it is me yay well deserved kimmy's killing it out there Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. And they it's just ESPN. Me- it's ESPN, by the way. That is a big um, deal. That's a wow. huge deal. Congrats. I mean, they just shouted me out the other day. They were like, so yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Congrats. Um, and you're working hard and, and you're putting in the work and you know what you want to do. And uh, we're very proud of you, Kimmy. Keep keep killing it. Uh, when you stop answering my messages, I'll know. I'm like, all right, she's signed. So, usually, usually. <laughs> Which will be never. I answer people in 0.2 Aww. seconds. I have oh, like no. a reputation that if I don't answer somebody in five minutes, they think I'm dead. It's very true. You can ask any of my personal friends. They're like, oh my God, Kimmy died. She didn't answer me in five minutes. Yes, be, like, be safe out there. And uh, you know what? Hopefully we'll see you in Baltimore because was it February sixth? Uh, Trish Stratus, the headliner, Baltimore. That Slipfest. is not the date. <laughs> is it? Wait, is that, that, is, is that February sixth? No, it's no, it's not. It's February third. February third, Baltimore. Right? No, even yeah. sooner. Oh, oh wait, no, it's fifth, fifth, fifth. It's the yeah, fifth. All yeah, the it's the fifth. Early February. It's the yeah, February. early February. Oh boy, yeah. Wayne, s- no, save I'll us do here. It. February fifth, Baltimore Slab Fest six. We have Trish Stratus. We have Christian Cage, Christian Cage. and we have. Baseball stars, we have more celebrities to come. So if you want to get your ticket, you should go to BaltimoreSlapFest.com because there's more guests to be announced. This is going to be the biggest one yet because we are in a new venue. It is bigger. There is more parking, and I'll be there. There you go. Can't wait. That's going to be awesome. And, uh, Kim, are you going to be at Rampage tomorrow, AC, or no? No. All right. Well, the B- then BC boy- BCP boys will be there, so guys, we'll try to. Mm, there it is. I got you guys. Really, no one. Thank you, Wayne. I appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I know where I was I with you. Yeah. Wayne, I hear yeah. you have a pretty awesome Tic Tac. Uh, Tic Tic Tacs are good too, but TikTok. Uh, where can everyone follow you, man? On social, you have a great social media presence. 
Yeah, I'm trying, man. So uh, it's the Key Nation, K E E H, and then Nation. Um, I've been rocking that for a while. It's just the people who supported me. Um, so you could do uh, find me at Key Nation on TikTok and Key Nation on Twitter. Um, I'm just Wayne Ray Keener on Facebook, so you can catch me from this. But um, you know, I don't know if I'm legally allowed to do this, but I do work for our wireless Delran. I sell cell phones. Um, I work for Verizon, so if anybody's in the Delran area, you need to upgrade your phone. You want to switch from uh, whatever carrier you have over to the nation's uh, biggest 5G network. Uh, come on and see me. I'll give you, I'll give you, you know, hook you up. So, but I really appreciate this, and I hope I get invited to do it again because uh, I really like talking wrestling with like-minded people, and uh, this was very fun. So, thank all three of you for giving me this opportunity thank you wayne hell of a debut and uh let's take you know before we throw it to mueller uh shameless promo while you guys are all watching uh hope you enjoy the bcb you know go over to itunes give us five stars it's not itunes anymore i'm sold apple podcast apple. give us five stars subscribe on youtube we just had a great rare interview with both tasha Steeles and diana perazzo check that out it's awesome but also check out a podcast called uh sweet chin musings i think it's called mike absolutely very smart by the way to get that in rob before i give my thing because we all know they're here to hear me uh but yes i don't think they are sweet they're here for me at all the places that you can listen to your favorite podcast find us on facebook at sweet chin musings find us on twitter at sweet chin musings without the i in chin because my tagline was too long uh you can also see me and kimmy uh duke it out in paper form uh or digital form i guess on the bob culture podcast we've got the mike versus kimmy thing i'm one and oh that would be the pop break you're messing up your pop with me and kimmy and it's a lot of fun we have a lot of fun with it uh other than that i'm just kind of working and paying the bills and doing what i can can't wait to get out to the east coast to visit all you guys and see some wonderful wrestling action i do want to throw one quick thing out uh for i want to say it's city championship wrestling that's having a show in uh the metro detroit area actually at lance cruz uh where uh my boy rhino is going to be in the main event doing some tag team action love rhino a detroit hometown guy very excited about that that's this friday i'm going to be there i'm going to hope to maybe score my first uh, pro wrestler interview. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, just trying to get out there, have some fun. I'm inspired by all you guys and the amazing work that you do. And as always, Rob, once again, it's an honor for you to have me. So thank you so much. It really is. His, his rate goes up every time. He's the only one who gets paid. And guys, as we always say. You he, pay him? As we always say. <laughs> You're not getting paid. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's like we always say here on the BC. Over me? Everyone stay safe. Stay positive. Take care of each other. We out. Peace. We'll